A and B are independent. In other words, the fact that A happened doesn't impact on the chances of B happening. Toward the end of this video, we'll deal with scenarios where there is dependence, but don't worry about that for now. But what about the probability of this or that happening? Let's think about throwing a dice and calculating the probability of throwing a two or a three. Either one or the other might happen, but not both. They're what we call mutually exclusive. If one of them happens, the other can't happen because we're only throwing the dice once. Now, once again, there are six equally likely possibilities and they will be our denominator. Of those, two possible outcomes meet our criteria. So the probability of rolling a two or a three is two over six, which is equal to one over three. But is there an easier way of us getting there without having to count up all the possible outcomes? And the answer is yes. We can think about the probability of each outcome and then add them together. The chances of rolling a two is one over six, and the chances of rolling a three is one over six. If we add them together, we get two over six, which is one over three. So the lesson here is that the probability of A or B taking place, so either event can happen to meet the criteria, is the same as adding the probability of A and B. And in this particular example, for this to be true, the events have to be mutually exclusive. With one throw of the dice, you can't get a two and a three. So let's look at an example where the events aren't mutually exclusive. Now we spin a coin and we throw a dice. What are the chances that we get either a heads on the coin or a three on the dice? But note that this includes the possibility that we get a heads and a three at the same time. These two events are not mutually exclusive. Well, there are 12 possible combinations of coin flips and dice rolling, and that's gonna be our denominator. Six of those 12 possibilities include flipping a heads, and so the chances of getting a heads is six over 12 or 0.5 or 50%, all good so far. And two of those scenarios include getting a three on the dice, either a three with the heads or a three with the tails. So the probability of getting a three is two over 12, which is 0.16. Now the question is, can we simply add these two numbers up? the 0.5 and the 0.16? And the answer is no, we can't. And it's because of this scenario in which we spin a heads and we throw a three, it's double counted. It's included in the calculation on the left and the calculation on the right. So to get the probability of flipping a heads or throwing a three, we need to add them together and then subtract that double count, which is the probability of getting a heads and throwing a three. And then we can easily calculate the answer. So the rule here is that the probability of A or B happening, so either event can happen to meet the criteria, is given by adding them together and then subtracting the probability of them both happening. And that's because of our double counting. Now this formula is what we use when they're not mutually exclusive. I will tell you that you can use this